So here are pumps in the series. So we have a flow rate coming in and we'll call this pump A. And then series means there's a pump B. And of course, because they're in series in steady state, the flow through pump A must equal the flow through pump B. Conservation of mass. Uh, now, we have the um, pump head. So, pump head is, there's two in series, the pump head one plus the pump head, oh, let's call it A, pardon me, pump head for pump A plus the pump head for pump B. It looks pretty similar to pipes in series. Pipes in series, QA equal QB. Pipes in series, the total head loss due to friction is equal to head loss due to friction in pipe A plus the head loss due to friction due to pipe B. So yeah, they're similar. That's good news. Now, pumps in parallel. Okay, flow rate, we'll call this Q, A, Q, B. Now we have a flow rate coming in, Q, and now we have two pumps, pump A and pump B. Q, A, Q, B just like pipes in series. Conservation of mass, the flow rate that comes in Q equal QA plus QB. The head loss, or the, the pump head in pipe, in pump A, pump head A equal pump head B. They must be equal because they're in parallel. We're going to look only at identical pumps. They won't be two different kinds of pumps. That's another level of complexity. So we'll just focus on these problems for homework or in class, whatever. They'll always be the same pump, the same size, the same physical pump. OK, two equations. Conservation of mass, energy. Conservation of mass, energy. OK. Um, so we start off. And let's do, uh, let's do series first. All right, so we've got, here's the uh, curve. This is the flow rate Q again. This is the pump head HP. And let's say that this is um, pump A. These are in series. So pump A. So if they're in series, here it is, at any given flow rate Q, at any given flow rate Q, you add the pump heads together. You add them. I'm going to take a flow rate of zero. Here's the pump head for one pump. Add it to the pump B flow rate at zero. There. Take this flow rate. There's, there's the head of pump A. Add it. There's the head of two of them together. Take these two right here. Take that distance. Add it. There. Take this one here to here. Add it there. Take this one, zero. Add it to zero. Zero plus zero, zero. Now connect the dots. There's two pumps in series, identical pumps. How do we do it again? OK. You choose arbitrarily a flow rate Q.
you take the head of one pump at that flow rate Q. Let's say the head is 10 meters, 10 meters. Add it, 10 plus 10 is 20. That's 20 up there. So you take the, flow, the head for one pump and you add it for two pumps, identical. That's how you construct the curve for our two pumps in series. Okay, now we take two pumps in parallel. Same thing, we take Q over here, we take HP up here. Okay, here's pump A. Now the rules change. It says, now what you do, the pump heads are the same, but you add the Qs. Okay, so I'll start here. I'll make something up, I don't know, let's just say 50, just for fun. Okay, the pump heads are 50. Add the flow rates. What's the flow rate through pump A? Zero. The flow rate through pump B? Zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Okay, so we're still here, okay? But now, that's our starting point. Now, we take another, choose a pump head now. Here we chose a Q. Now you choose a pump head, horizontally. What does it say? Add the flow rate through pump A to the flow rate through pump B. They're identical pumps. Here's the flow rate through pump A. Add it. Here's the flow right through pump B. There they are, that's the first dot, second dot, pardon me. Guess another HP from the graph. Here's the flow right through pump A. Add it to flow right through pump B. There. Take the one down here at this pump head. This is a flow right through pump A. Add it to the flow right through pump B, there. Now connect the dots. Two pumps in parallel. Okay, that, now if, there, if there's 10 pumps in series, that's okay. You can do that, Just multiply it by a factor of 10. Okay, so there's how you add pumps in series and parallel. Now, we talked about the operating point before. What's the operating point? It's the intersection point between the pump head curve and the system head curve, graphically, where the two lines intersect. We said um, previously that um, if you had Q, and here's H, P. Here's the pump curve, H, P. Here's the system curve, H, system. The intersection point is called the operating point. It gives you a flow rate, and it gives you a head. That's where, that's the flow rate that would occur if you put that pump in that particular system. Where does the system curve come from? The um, geometry of the problem. Are there two reservoirs separated by 50 meters, 1,000 feet of pipe, one meter diameter, the pipe is made of commercial steel? All of those things go into the system curve. Are there minor losses? If there are, it goes in the system curve. So that's the system. This is a pump you put in the system. Where they intersect, that's called the operating point. You should be close to the maximum efficiency to be efficient in your pump operation. So you want to have that point close to the peak efficiency if you can. Over here, okay, here's a system curve. H system. 
if you only have one single pump, here's the operating point. Typically, why do you put pumps in series? Well, you can see what happens here. You develop a much bigger head. A much bigger head. So typically, there's always exceptions, but typically you put pumps in series to generate a high head. When they want to pump oil out of an oil well, and the oil's way down deep in the earth, and it's not coming out very fast, and you want to pump it out of there, you're going to be pumping for a, from a great distance down there, a great distance down. Your, your uh, head to pump is going to be big. You've got to pump oil from way down there up to the surface. If you want to pump out of a high head situation, you put pumps in series. Typical in maybe an oil well, typical, maybe 20 to 25 pumps in series. Not two, I said 20 to 25 pumps in series. <coughs> Why don't they just use one big pump? Well, if you want to use one big pump, you gotta drill a hole, I'm gonna make something up. You gotta drill a hole five feet in diameter. Oh my gosh, how do you drill a hole that deep into the ground to get the oil out? No, 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 you drill a small hole and you put 25 pumps on, a, on one shaft. And those 25 pumps are in series. And they pump oil out of great depths of oil wells to the surface. They use pumps in series. So now you take the case of pumps in parallel. I'll make this up. Let's say that this is the system curve for that. Here's a single pump. Okay, here's two pumps in parallel. What did you just do? Wow, did I increase the flow rate dramatically. The flow rate was here, now the flow rate is here. Did the head change by much? No. Did the flow rate change by much? No. Did the head change by a lot? Yes. There's always exceptions, but typically this is kind of the rule. If you want to develop more flow, put the pumps in parallel. If you want to develop a higher head, put the pumps in series. Okay, so that's kind of the rules of how you operate with these guys. And now we'll take an example on that and see how that works out. Let's see here. Okay. I'm going to take these two first. Okay, so the example I'm going to take, and I'm going to put that, I think, in the middle panel for right now. Okay. Okay, between two reservoirs. All right, so let's go ahead and make that between uh, two reservoirs. Uh, let's see what we're supposed to find here. Okay, we know that. All right, so we'll take him. Let's take, let's make the lower reservoir on the left, upper one on the right, makes it more realistic. So we'll take this reservoir here, Z1, okay, and let's make sure that I call that by Z1, yep, here it is, okay. Okay, let's see if I've got that here. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of, I've got it right here. Yeah, this is good. Okay, let's see what we've got then. This is what's given in the problem statement. Uh, we're given, um, a pump pumping water up to an upper reservoir, okay, Z2, Z2. Uh, we're given that uh, delta Z is 15.
Okay, uh, we're given that uh, D is 300 meters, pipe diameter. 300, uh, not 300, mill millimeters. And the length of the pipe is 70 meters. And the friction factor is 0 0.025. And for minor losses, a summation of the Ks is uh, 2.5. There's elbows in there, there's entrances in there, there's exits in there, there's all kinds of things in there. So we don't know, he, didn't, he wasn't specific on that, but we know that um, that's what it was. Okay, so 15, all right. So first thing, uh, Find, I guess, the, let's just, yeah, find the flow rate and the pump head. So find the flow rate Q and the pump head. And I'll draw the picture for the pump over here. Yeah. So he, he gives us the, uh, the picture for the uh, pump head. So let me draw that pump head picture. Starts out at 21, 2, 3. Yeah, 23. You verify that. 1, 2, 3. Yeah. Okay. Q versus pump head starts out at uh, 20. 22.3. Okay, and then the flow rate, uh, zero, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 cubic <laughs> meters per second. Okay, and uh, when it gets down to 0 0.3, it's about 16. 0 0.3, it's down here roughly to 16. So here's 10, here's 20, here's 30, 40, and so on. So. This is given to you. That's given to you from the manufacturer of the pump. That's the pump head curve as a function of a Q. Okay, so now, remember, well, let's do part A. For a single pump. Okay, single pump. Okay, um, here's a system curve. Delta Z plus F L over D V squared over 2G plus summation of K's times V squared over 2G. All that system curve depends on is how far apart the reservoir's free surfaces are, how big is the pipe, how long is the pipe, what's the pipe made out of, and what are the minor losses in the line. Elbows, valves, entrances, exits, things like that. Okay, so this guy is equal to um, our difference in elevation of them, which is 15, I guess, right, 15, plus, I'm not going through all of that, it's uh, 85 Q squared. Replace the V with the Q, Q, Q equal V A. So replace the V with the Q divided by the area. We know the area, it's pi D squared divided by four. There it is right there. So get rid of that V, why? Because I've got a Q in that graph. I don't want V, I want Q in my equation. So get rid of the V there and there and put it in terms of Q, got it, done it, right there. Now, I plot the system curve on the same graph with the pump head curve. 
I plot this guy. When Q equals zero, where does he start? 15, okay, got it. Q equals zero, we start right here. Plot the point. This is what I did actually. If I can find my notes here. Let's see if I can find what I did here. Uh, you just go ahead and guess some values of, uh, yeah, this one right here. Okay, there's a hundred. Nope, I don't have a hundred. Yeah, I guess I didn't put those values down. But that's okay. We can go ahead and just show you how it looks. <clears throat> I'm going to guess Q equal 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Okay, put that guy in here. Q squared, 0 0.1 squared, 0 0.01. Okay, bump, bump. All right, 15.85. So here it goes up to here. Uh, let's see at three, where is it? It's about, um, oh, okay, it's about uh, 22 and a half. At point three, it's up at 22 and a half, right about here. Okay, you guess some Qs, you put the Qs in here, and you plot the system curve. So what I did here, H system. Okay, first of all, you write the system curve like this. You know where it came from, the energy equation. Okay. You put in everything. You guess some cues. You plot the curves. Where they intersect, that's where the pump is going to operate. There it is. That's the operating point. If you draw it like I did on engineering green, Engineering green, I plotted it. And you go down here. You're going to get a value of Q, 0 0.23. All right, so now I know. Single pump, Q operating. 0 0.23 cubic meters per second. Uh, the pump head. There's a pump head. The pump head is 19.5 meters. Okay, one pump, that's not, we, that's review. We did that before, one pump. We're not interested in one pump, we're interested in multiple pumps. Okay, so, now we're gonna say, second part of the problem, delta Z is still 15, but now I put two pumps in uh, parallel. Two pumps in parallel. Uh, here's right here, pumps in parallel. Uh, here's right here, single pump here, two pumps in parallel. Okay, what do I do? Okay, I choose some values. I'm going to change this now. I choose some values on the pump head curve. Choose Q equals zero. Okay, so I chose Q equal to zero. Okay. What's the flow rate? Zero. What's the flow rate through pump A? Zero. What's the flow rate through pump B? Zero. Add them together, zero plus zero, zero. Okay, start out there, zero. Choose randomly, pick a number on the, on the Y axis. There. What's the flow rate? Uh, 0 0.17. 0 0.17 plus 0 0.17, 0 0.34. Find 0.34, it's out here. 0.34, got it. Uh, 
How about this point right here at that value of pump head? I don't know what that is. Maybe that this was um, 20. That might be 13, 14. Uh, point 0.3, point 0.3. Point 0.3 plus point 0.3, point 0.6 out here. Big fat black dot, point 0.6. Connect the points. Here goes through here, goes through there. Good. Two pumps in parallel. Where's the operating point? Where the two curves intersect. Right there. Operating point. Two pumps in parallel. OK. Um, now if you go down, directly down. The uh, flow rate, pretty, well, I'm, I'm pretty good on this board. I can't believe it. There's Q, operating point. It's point uh, two nine. Uh, part B, two pumps in parallel. Q, operating point is equal to 0 0.29. The uh, pump head at the operating point, the pump head, 22.2, it's really close. There's the pump head, 22 .2. But you have to be a little bit cautious here because that's the flow rate when the two pumps are in parallel. Okay. There they are, two pumps in parallel. If the total flow rate is 0.29, guess how much goes through A? Half. How much goes through B? Half. That's the key. Okay. There it is right there. What's that Q coming in? 0.29. What's that guy? 0.29 divided by 2. What's that guy? 0.29 divided by 2. Okay. Flow rate's half. How about the pump head? 22.2. Check it out. 22.2. 22.2. Conclusion. At the operating point, the pump head for both pumps is the same, but the Q's add to get the total flow rate Q. Okay. Now we do one more. Two pumps in parallel. Okay, I'll re I'm gonna redraw this. Uh, yeah, I will, okay. Um, let's see, leave him on there. Get rid of uh, single pumps, okay. Okay, get rid of him. <coughs> get rid of him. We'll start fresh. Okay. Okay, get rid of him. <coughs> get rid of him. Get rid of him and him and him. We're almost there now. We don't want this guy, we don't want this guy, okay. Okay. So, now, let me read the third part. This is a three-part problem. Part one said, put a single pump in there. Got it. Part B said, put two pumps in parallel. Got it. Part three says, um, now we have, for part C, we have um, 
the pump layout, discharge, and head for delta Z now is 25. So now, delta Z equal 25. Okay, delta Z is 25. So we go back to our energy equa or system equation. What's delta Z? 25. 25. Okay, so now we draw the curve. Start when Q equals zero. When Q equals zero, H is 25. And now you guess Q. Yeah, go ahead. For part B, when we added a second pump in parallel. Which one now? This one? Yeah. Um, so do we add any length to the pipe for the friction head? They, they don't. They don't. <coughs> that pipe is so long, you might add two meters or something like that, but no. I mean, that, that length of pipe 70 is this piece plus this piece plus this piece plus this piece, this piece. This piece, okay. You don't really include these losses in here, in, in here. Really what it is from here to here and from here to here. That's the 70. This plus that. These guys, it's assumed the pump just pretty much, good. the pipe goes in the pump real quick. So you don't throw that, that it's minor typically, minor. Guess Q equal 0.1, okay. 0.1 squared, 0.01, da da. 25 and eight, 33.5. 33.5. Uh, let me get it drawn correctly. Okay, so if I go out to point three, I'm roughly at uh, 32 and a half. Point three, I'm roughly at 32 and a half about there. Okay. Um, at point two, I'm about at uh, 26. Point two, I'm roughly at 26. Okay, and at zero, it's 25. Oh, no, it's 20, it's, um, pardon me, 27, 28 at there, it's 28 out there, so it's up here. All right, so here's the system curve. Here's the pump curve. I say, okay now. That single pump, when I turn it on, what's the flow rate going to be? And I say, gee, I don't think I can tell you. Because supposedly, it's at the operating point. And the operating point is where the system curve intersects the pump curve. Conclusion, that pump's going to sit there, and it's going to rotate because you've got to plug it into the power supply. But it's not going to move any water. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Okay, so my system curve is too high. I got to get more, I got to get more system head. Let's see now, what was the conclusion? If I wanted to get a bigger system head, what do I do? I add the pumps in series. Okay. Conclusion is, I have to add another pump in series. Okay. There's one pump, how do we do that? Here's the game again. Guess a Q, get an H pump. Double it. Stop. Guess a Q, double it. Stop. Guess a Q, double it. Stop. Guess a Q, zero. Double it, zero. Got it. Go over here. H pump. 22.3 when the flow is zero. 22.3. Double it. 44.6. 44. Four point six. My first point. At one tenth, just choose them arbitrarily. Double it. There. At two tenths, double it. There, with the ruler. If you want, or read the numbers off the axis. Three tenths here. Stop. There. Connect the dots. Now, this is two pumps in series. Now you say to yourself, did they intersect? And the answer is, yes, they did now. Two pumps are going to work. 
Here's the operating point. Two pumps uh, in series. And if we do that and we go down on the curve, we get Q. It should be, if I did it right, it would be When you plot it on engineering green, you'll find out it's 0.3. So uh, here, from graph, operating point, Q operating point is equal to 0 0.30 cubic meters per second. Uh, the pump head operating point is equal to, let's see if I can do my graph relatively correctly. 32.7, yeah, not bad. H, two pumps, operating point, two pumps in series, 32.7 meters. Here's a picture for part C. Okay, now comes a question. For a single pump, one pump, for pump A, what's the flow rate? Uh, it's gotta be him. Why? Right there, pumps in series, there it is. Okay, here comes the other question now. <coughs> for a single pump, what's the pump head for a single pump? Oh, okay. They add together, they're equal. Okay, they add together, not equal, they add together. Okay, so 32.7 equal H pump head for pump A plus pump head for pump B. For a single pump, divide it by two. Okay, divide it by two. Okay, um, now just so we know, um, you could also be given an efficiency curve, efficiency curve for pump A or pump B, they're identical efficiency curve. And so, let me redraw it because I want to be, I want to be closer to where I'm operating this guy right here. That's, that's fine, let's do it this way. Um, okay. So, for a single pump, what's the efficiency for the single pump? Well, what's the flow rate for the single pump there in series, 0.3? Flow rate for a single pump, 0.3. What's the efficiency? Right here. There's the efficiency right there. Uh, what if I want to get the power into the pump from a motor? So find input power. I don't have, a, I don't have an input power on the graph. I don't have that. But I do know this, the efficiency of the pump equal W dot pump out divided by W dot pump in. I want that guy, the power into the pump from the motor. Okay, I can do it. W power into the pump equal W power out, okay. What's that called again? The water horsepower? It's gamma QHP divided by the pump efficiency. So I go to the graph with the flow rate 0.3. What's the flow rate 0.3? I get the pump head. I know the efficiency, I know gamma, I solve for the power in. So that's how I get the power in. If I'm given an efficiency curve on that graph, I can do that. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, uh, there's different approaches. This is a good example because we start off with a single pump. We then put two pumps in parallel, we solve that, and then we say, well, what if we try and pump water to reservoirs 25 meter separation? Uh, a single pump's not going to do it. You need two pumps. Are you going to put them in series or parallel?
The rule of thumb is if you want a higher head, put them in series. We did that and we found what the flow rate was. We found the pump head and we found the power into a single pump, W dot pump in. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, good stopping point. That finishes our pump story, so we'll see you next Monday then. <laughs>